Hey, what's up everybody? Terry White here, and I've got a tip for those of you who are shooting those big or even medium-sized family or group shots, especially if you have kids in it and you just can't get everyone to look and pay attention at the same time. So my buddy Mia ran into the situation. They took multiple shots and she asked me if I could like, some people had their eyes closed, some people aren't looking, could I fix it? So let me show you my approach for fixing it. There's multiple ways to do it. I'm gonna show you, I think was the easiest for most people to comprehend. All right, so here we go. So she sent me these three photos and it's just, it's, it's everything that you could possibly do wrong. The guy on the end over here is completely cut off. The kids in the front are completely disengaged. The lighting in the back is not good. There are people with their heads cut off because there's somebody standing in front of them. So there's the people that just aren't looking, the people that are talking, having side conversations. So it's, it's pretty much worst case scenario. But luckily, she did send me three photos. So let's go to the second one. Second photo, well, now we get the guy over here that was cut off, so at least we get that guy in the shot. Uh, the kids are even more disengaged and have eyes closed. At least this person's looking now. Some people are looking. And then you have uh, the third shot. So the third shot is probably the one I'm gonna use as my foundation because it has the most going on in terms of everyone's in the shot. Most people are looking and the kids are more engaged except for this kid who's looking over here. So it's, it's the one with the least amount of issues. Now, if I go to the other two, so let's say this is gonna be my base, this is gonna be my foundation. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this layer. So it's just, a, it's, it's unlock the background, so it's just a layer. And then we're gonna go to this one. And I would say that this one is a no-go because you're, you're missing a guy over here on the right. So let's, let's just go ahead and close this one. This one is not of any use to me at all. So I'm gonna say close it, don't save it, and now we're just left with the two. Okay, so this is the one where we've got some people back here that are looking now, and this is the one where we got more of the kids looking. So we wanna combine those two. You could do three, you could do four, you could do as many as it takes with the same technique, but in this case, I really only have two good shots to work with. Now, before I get into combining them, I wanna go ahead and take care of the lighting and fix the issues with the photo first. So let's go ahead and go into my favorite uh, camera raw filter and let's go straight to the camera raw filter there and I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto tone and it didn't really do a lot. So there's, my problem really with this one is not so much the exposure but it's more the shadows in the background. So we're really gonna bump up those shadows and kind of really bring out some detail in the background. I still might need to increase the contrast in blacks and other things like that, but you get the idea. It's just kind of making the tone a little bit better in the background. And I could do a mask and I could paint it in and all that, but let me go ahead and get the composite shot done first. All right, so now we got this one done, and now we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other one. So we're just going to go into uh, filter, camera raw filter, and yes, you could make it a smart filter, and yes, you could make it non-destructive and all those things, but this is just a quick tip. All right, so let's go ahead and do auto on this one. It did a little bit more. Let's go ahead and bump that exposure a little bit more on this one. Oh yeah, it's really bringing out the people in the back with, that I need. And let's go ahead and again, bump those shadows to bring out more of those people in the background. Okay, great. Now that I got my two shots, and again, you tweak the two shots to your heart's content, I'm going to take the shot uh, the, I'm gonna call it the second shot, even though it's the first one in the window, and put it on top of what's gonna be my composite. So we're gonna take this layer, and we're gonna drag it up to the background. Actually, we're gonna drag it up to this one, drag it in, and let go. So now we've got, if I go to my Move tool, I've got the two layers on top of each other. So what I wanna do now is I want Photoshop to align them. We used to lower the opacity and try and do it manually, but Photoshop does a pretty good job of doing it itself. So I'm gonna to go to the first layer, which is layer one. Uh, that's the one on top. I'm gonna to go to the second layer, which is the one we started with. I'm gonna select them both by holding down the shift key. And then I'm gonna to go to my edit menu and I'm gonna come down to auto align layers. And I'm just gonna leave it on auto. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. 
And now if I were to go to the first layer and lower the opacity, again, they won't be perfect because the other thing the person didn't do that shot these is they didn't shoot them on a tripod. So the camera moved in every single shot. It may not be at the same height, definitely not at the same left and right angle. So it, it's the camera's different in all, over, all over this place. And that's why we ended up with this uneven uh, layer on top of the other layer. So that's okay. They're now aligned as best Photoshop could do. Now I'm going to take the layer on the top and I'm gonna add a layer mask. And when I add the layer mask, I want the layer mask to hide the whole photo. In other words, it's like turning the photo off, even though it's just hidden behind a mask. Now, if you just click and add a mask, it does nothing. I mean, well, it adds the mask, but it doesn't do anything visually to the photo. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna hold down my Option or Alt key and click and add the mask. So now the entire photo is hidden behind this black mask in my layers panel. It's there, it's just you can't see any of it. Because what I wanna be able to do is I wanna see the faces that need changing. In other words, this kid that's looking over to the left. Well, in the other photo, the one on top that's now masked, he's not looking to the left. So that's one of the ones I wanna bring in. So now I'm gonna grab a brush. So I just hit the letter B. I'm gonna to go to and grab white paint or white foreground color. And then I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna make my brush nice and big. There we go, I'm just using my bracket key on a US keyboard next to the letter P. You got your left and right bracket there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and brush in that white paint, this kid. There we go. So now, of course, you gotta be careful of what you're brushing. So you wanna zoom in, you wanna make sure you're not, you know, brushing his clothes where it looks different or the clothes behind him look different. You wanna make sure you get all the hair. So like I was missing part of his head there. You just wanna make sure you get that all in there because otherwise you're gonna see the two, like one superimposed on top of the other. And if you keep brushing, you're gonna get all the other stuff that was part of that other photo too. So that's what I say, you gotta be careful of what you're bringing back. Okay, so that is just a quick um, bringing in the other photo that's on top by masking it in. Okay, so now we just keep doing that. So let's start over here on the left-hand side. This is Mia, the one who sent me the photo. She looks really serious in this one, but on the one on top, she's kind of leaning over and smiling a little bit. So we just wanna go ahead and bring that in. Now, if you brush in too much, you can always switch to black, like I brushed in too much of her shoulder. So I either gotta to commit to that and keep brushing to get it all, or I'd have to switch to white and brush it back in. So it's up to you, depending on the photo, you can decide what's better to either bring in the whole thing or you got to you know, decide how much of it you want to bring in. But let's say we're going to stop there for now because, again, it's just a demo. Now we move over. We keep just going to, this, to the le left to right. We got this guy back here that's kind of not looking at all. Well, I think in the other photo, he is looking. There he is. So let's go ahead and bring him in. And that's why I put the, the, the photo that... And so now I'm kind of committing to all of this because I kept brushing. And so now we're going to bring her head in too. And we're just going to get all of this and kind of get all three of them in there now with the new shot. Okay, great. And again, I'm not taking my time. I'm just kind of showing you the technique. You'll take your time and do a great job. But we're going to bring this kid in who wasn't looking, but now they are. Uh, this person looks like their eyes are closed. So let's go ahead and open up their eyes with the other photo. This guy wasn't looking, but now he is. And it's like magic. You're just bringing in the other photos that are in the top, you're, the other people in the top photo and just unmasking them uh, just enough to show that they're looking. And again, you pay attention to how much you bring back because like in this case, I'm getting rid of a whole person. We don't want that. So in this case, I, I got to be careful how much of this guy I bring back because for whatever reason, that other person was either completely moved over to the side or not there. So now we keep going. Uh, this guy's got his eyes closed. So we open his eyes up with the other photo. Okay, great. They're all looking. They're all looking. They're all looking. I'm trying to see if I see anybody else. But I think at this point, you got the technique. Now it's just tweaking. I see over here, I was messing up this woman. Let's get her back. And that's the other thing. You just want to visually check everyone's head, everyone's face. 
Make sure it's not duplicated. Make sure there's no double exposures there. And I don't know if this kid's expression's any better. Let's see. And uh, he's got the same expression in either one. So we'll just undo that one and keep it. And now we have our before and after shot. And of course, we'll crop it down and get it, get it right. But here, here's our before and after. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is before. Got lots of heads and people not looking and people's eyes closed and so forth and so on. And this is our after. So it's just really unmasking those few people and uh, whatever else you need to unmask to keep them all in line and all looking for your group shot. Now we're gonna go ahead and crop. We'll clear our aspect ratio because I don't need it to be 16 by nine. Let's undo or escape out of that again. Let's click one more time, there we go. And now we'll just go ahead and crop this up a little bit. And we don't need all that headroom, so we'll crop it down a bit. And we don't need that stuff on the side, so we'll crop it in some more on that side. And now we'll create our decent group holiday photo with everyone looking, everyone facing forward, everyone's eyes open. They might not all be smiling, but you got it. So that's my technique. Just combine multiple layers, mask all the layers on top, and reveal the parts of each layer that look better than your bottom layer, your base layer. So with that said, cheers everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks Mia for the sample photos. Um, so that was a good payment for my work, allowing me to do this tutorial with your photos. Cheers everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.